Hello everybody, I'm Nestorm here. Welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4, Millennium Dawn, Greece. In the last episode, we worked on fighting the war that we have kind of found ourselves in. And uh, in that vein, um, we were beginning to prepare for an invasion of the Scandinavian nations, uh, Norway, Denmark, Iceland. I don't know if you consider Iceland as part of Scandinavia. Probably not. Um... And France was able to successfully land uh, naval invasions. So instead of landing our own, I uh, went ahead and just moved our forces into France's beachheads. And we were able to rather quickly um, roll over Norway. And now we are working on Denmark. And we have most of Denmark occupied. We just have to push our way... Uh, to Copenhagen, there, and then, oh yeah, also Israel decided to join the enemy faction, and so now we are at war with Israel as well. We've moved some troops in there. We have more guys on the way, so we'll have to let them get into position, and then we'll try and you know, roll over as much of Israel as possible. Navy's getting some work done. Okay, we have some new potential invites. Lithuania would like to join. Sure. Luxembourg, which is currently being ruled by the fascists, is willing to join. Sure. The Philippines is a hard no. Kenya would like to join. Yes. Uh, yeah, we did get new infantry fighting vehicles. So let's get those being built. We're slightly short on some tech. Let's get it from Chile. Our tech metals. Somehow they managed to actually get across there. Looks like that we can launch our naval invasion. Oh, we need a few more days, but we have the proper control. Korea was puppeted. I figured that that was going to happen. Sunken Norwegian submarine. All right, all of our troops down here, you guys. Tell them to go. These guys, actually, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna, I'm gonna remove their their orders and tell them to fall back. Because we don't actually need them there. Now, air superiority. Uh, let's 
see. 500 planes. Short steel, due to low trade influence. A uh, Korea can send us some steel. You know what, Kenya? Yeah, sure, you can join in. You're probably going to join in anyway. But that's all right. Uh, what's the supply situation down here? Let's see if we can, you know, improve these supply depots. some bottlenecks. How are we actually doing as far as all of our other infrastructural construction? Lots of construction to do. Alright. Let's just see what the what's going on with the current wars. We have the our Greek Danish war. You see have we broken through? No, but the French have. Five hundred thousand losses to eighty-eight thousand of our own. Okay, not bad. Egypt wants a bailout of 472 billion. Do I want to give Egypt a bailout? I think I shall, actually. That'll get me on their influence radar. Speaking of influence. Uh, and we also completed our stealing of German military blueprints. We have gained some recon tank improvements. I think we're actually working on that already. Yeah, so that wasn't really going to benefit us too much. Uh, can we steal some aviation blueprints? Yeah, let's do that. I think we've kind of hit our limit of what we're going to get from the army blueprints. German counterintelligence has been kind of sleeping. We've been able to just... Come on, roll in there. Alright. Just steal whatever we want. Okay, there actually is a front line there. Okay. Okay. 
All right, Icelandic invasion. Ready to go? Ready to go. Never mind. France took care of it. Man. Let me see. What is the participation score? France is at only 5%. This is good. United States is at 43%. That's not so good. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna basically take everything here. That's not gonna be great. It's all because it's all Israel's fault. If they hadn't joined this, we could have kept the United States out of this whole thing. But oh well. So, yep, there we go. United States has liberated Greenlands. They made Iceland a puppet. They made Denmark a puppet. Mexico has made Norway a puppet. The only nation that we don't have, that they haven't done anything with, is Uganda. Take all states. Except that there is a puppet in there. That is literally all I got out of that. Wow. All right, then. I can invite Andorra. Okay, sure. And the Czech Republic. Okay, so... This guy right here is kind of annoying. Independence is guaranteed by... The UK. Okay. Philippines, yeah. Alright. Let's get these guys back where they're supposed to be. Um, Speaking <laughs>
Uh, these marines, where do I want to put them? I think we're going to go ahead and just bring them back to here for the time being. Within our borders, but able to be moved into a position in Europe relatively quickly. Uh, can I get them to move? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, they need to get out of there. Now, these troops... Hmm... I am going to move them. Let's try that again. Are Marines, are they not? Yes, they are. Okay, so get them down to our North African territory. Guys, all right, now. have a whole bunch of technology finishing here soon. I need to decide what the next plan is going to be. I think it's going to be Commonwealth. And the decision is going to have to be what do or how do we want to go about that? I think justifying a war here would be the way to go. Western Outlook. All right, second gen stealth.
could continue working on strike fighters. I always can't, you know, I never remember what the difference is between strike fighters and clo and uh, multi rolls. Let's see. Mm, let's see, strike fighters are better at strategic bombing and ground attack. So they're just more of a ground attack oriented fighter, but not quite as a full close air support. Although we could start working on some of this. You know what? Let's work on this. All right, improved aircraft deck space and our recon tanks. So, I think what we're actually going to do here. Let's keep on trying to catch up on carrier technology. And recon tanks. Uh, you know what? We'll go ahead and create all those intelligence agency sections. Will you... There we go. Turn the puppets. Perfect. Alright. So... Is it time? It might be. I have a fleet in the area. It's not going to be the best fleet in the world. going to do with these is we're going to start building a strike force. Oh yeah, we don't have Corvettes in the strike force. Never mind. Merge. All right.
destroyers. We actually have like a cruiser, but like, mm, no. Do we have any frigates in here? We don't. We are building frigates, right? We are. And destroyers. I guess everything is going into our current strike forces because we're short of destroyer there. And all the frigates are going into our patrol groups. Okay. You just don't have enough ships. And what I could do is move this strike force into that fleet. Yeah, just to spread things out more evenly. Get that strike force to relocate the breast. And there's our own. Air based aircraft. Hmm. Let's go ahead and get a little bit ahead of the game on the the next gen. I guess our sixth gen fighters. Multi rolls. All right. for a fight with the Commonwealth. Maybe? So you won't need that or that, I don't think. Okay. I usually like to come into here at Darwin. I like to invade Australia. Multiple invasion sites. Secure the beachhead. Uh, 
And then we, once we establish our beachhead, then we pump up our um, naval base there for supply. We'll probably have to start building a, you know, a naval depot, a uh, supply depot, all kinds of that, all kinds of stuff. All right. I don't think 600 planes are going to be enough. Right, there's 800 planes. Another 800 planes. These are lights, air superiority fighters, multi rolls. Alright, 400 light strike fighters, move them over there. They still aren't going to have the range. Alright, well. We'll give them some naval strike. Orders. Uh, we are going to need some of our best planes over here. Which I really don't have. Uh, we actually have our own 5th gen CV multi rolls. In fact. Let's say we want to spend some air experience working on them. But actually, I actually would rather spend that air experience on our new light jets. Which we're going to need... Over 500. Uh, how much are we getting a day? 0.1. Okay. Then let's do this. Fortunately, this doesn't tell me how well the guys are trained. If 
We don't need these guys in Ukraine, so let's move them down here. Yeah, all of these, though. You all need... to go on exercises for training. Same here. Russia has declared war on Kazakhstan, huh? Let's take a couple wings of air superiority fighters. Let's also bring them down here. Kazakhstan has joined the Shanghai Pact, so it looks like we're going to have another war between Russia and China. Alright. Yeah, all of these planes. All of these planes need some exercises. Those guys do not. This is our most experienced, battle-hardened... In fact, what we're going to do... is go to you and say... Uh, where do I flag them to get upgraded? Oh, there it is. High replacement priority on that fighter wing. Uh, China and Russia have stopped sending me steel. That's somewhat annoying. Korea will send me steel, though, and so will... I want to get it from... Right, well, the Czech Republic? We're still short. All right, well, we're going to have to buy it. And we'll see if this war between Russia and China goes the same way the last one did, which is basically a stalemate back and forth until China then eventually collapses. It could go the other way this time. We'll see. All right, but I think we're at the end of this episode. We're, we're getting close to being prepared. We're now up to 0.18 per day. Yeah, pretty close. And so what we're going to do is we are going to justify a war goal here when I'm ready to go. 
And then we'll get ourselves involved in the next war. Alright, but for now, we'll stop here. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Go ahead, like, subscribe, and comment, and I will see you next time.